Hello and welcome to episode 12 of the Guinness World Records Gamers podcast. I'm your host and editor of the Gamers Edition, Mike Plant, and with me as ever is Luke Wakeham, our records manager in, Hello. in, in the gaming slant, and uh, our pair of trained uh, freelance journalists, Jack Turner. Hello. And Andy Luckley. Hello. You almost forgot to say hello there. I thought you? you were going to do us both at the same time and then it was like this whole thing. Uh, yeah. It's just, it's just it's only, hard. It only happens every week. <laughs> Saying your own name is we need, very hard. <laughs> we need name badges. Like, hello, my name is Andy. And like, we're working in a kind of 7 Eleven or something like that. <laughs> we uh, are available on uh, YouTube and all podcast uh, outlets you choose, including iTunes, just Google, Guinness World Records, Gamers Podcast. GWR Gamers Podcast will probably do. And, uh, and you will find us uh, on the interwebs. Uh, right, this week we've got a great show for you, so uh, we'll be doing a little bit of uh, the news of the week. Uh, we'll be doing the games we've been playing, and Luke will be bringing his on the record yep. uh, delights for us this week, and the slightly different boss fight quiz. We'll, tell, we'll get there, we'll, tell, we'll explain all when we get there. Cheating! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, on with the show. Okay, so this week uh, in the news, it's actually fairly slim pickings of like mm. massive meaty news stories. I think everyone's just been like in uh, Apex Legends that we'll get to uh, later. I think probably the journalists are drowning in Valentine's Day themed press releases. That's what's <laughs> happening. Right? Yeah. Any shoehorned theme you can get in <laughs> about Valentine's Day. Um, yeah, you know, I think that's probably what they're wading through right now. I would imagine. It's when you should say that, Andy, because <laughs> <laughs> it is it. Yes. Because uh, oh, seamless. To, uh, <laughs> to begin the show, I thought we'd Speaking talk about uh, the Valentine's Day uh, goofball stuff that's happening on Nintendo's <laughs> website at the moment. So they I basically think. compiled. Uh, what is it? Six, uh, twelve characters here: uh, Mario, Princess Peach. For those who aren't able to watch the video. But yeah, Mario, <laughs> Princess Peach, Luigi, Yoshi, Pikachu, Wario, Waluigi, Isabel from Animal Crossing, Link, Princess Zelda, Kirby, and Jibanyan from uh, what? <laughs> what? You know more about this than from I do. Yokai Watch. Yokai Watch. Yeah. Oh, Mike. We well, no, well, I can't take uh, any more. I've got Pokemon, you know. But, but yeah, so uh, Nintendo have asked um, its loyal fan base to vote on. Which I, which of these icons you'd like to take out on a date, I suppose? Who would you want to give a Valentine to is the way they phrase it. And you'll never guess who won by an absolute landslide. I can guess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they've just seen the printout, well, <laughs> which you showed to the internet. Our radio listeners, you know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Waluigi, you can do the acting if you like. You I do it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Waluigi, yeah. <laughs> we should say voice uh, from a uh, fan of the show, uh, Friend of the show, I should say, uh, Charles Martinez. Oh, Charles who, would approve. Yeah, <laughs> I was say, he might be. He might worry worried, worried about his job now. Yeah, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Can Charles you imagine approved of spending this an evening with that voice, though. Well, like, Luigi, over a nice candlelit dinner with that voice for three hours. It'd be a bit much. Well, it? more than one point two million voters can. Wow. So this all kind of goes back to this a sort of a weird campaign of, of Nintendo uh, fans who think that Nintendo don't really like Waluigi. <laughs> he's the most underappreciated like, character. Yeah, because he's never been introduced properly into um, um, Smash. Well, there's also, but he's never had his own game. Yeah, in he's, any, he's just always game. popped up randomly in these sort of like, you know, collective sports games or like mini games <laughs> and stuff like that. It's like, where's the Waluigi game? Does he need his own game? I, I'm Does kind he, of. I, what, what's he bringing to the table? Do you know what I reckon it would be? I reckon they could do a good stealth action game with Waluigi. That's when he gets to the end of the level and has to gloat. Also, <laughs> can I just a slight bugbear of mine? Surely he should be Ouija. Right, yeah. Luigi. It's Wario. About Mario, it. Wario, yeah. Waluigi. Yeah, it's not one Mario. No. Yeah. <laughs> That's my biggest complaint. Well, about Luigi. Is that why you're not giving him a Valentine? Absolutely. Not. <laughs> he looks like Dick Dastardly as well, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he does actually. Off, off brand Dick Dastardly. See him yeah. Wacky races. I enjoy the way that he's just kind of tweaking his moustache when all the other characters are doing like weird little poses, but he's mm. just he's just going for. But the he's always doing that, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and like you say, in the tennis game, he. Has his rose on hand and things like his, that. His uh, like his is ultimate it? ability in Ooh. tennis aces was he put a rose in his mouth and then he did it like a moonwalk backwards or something. Wow. <laughs> it that does. Is, uh, no, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> that would have swung my vote, I think. Actually, to be fair. So it does beg the question: Who would you guys uh, want <clears throat> to give a Valentine to out of these? Of these twelve uh, characters. Of these 12 yeah, characters. Yeah, yeah. That's a good question, Mike. Thanks for asking it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I feel quite sad for Yoshi in a way. Because yeah. you could go out on a nice date with Yoshi, and then he could give you a lift home. 
Well, Isn't back, um, Dinosaur Island, Island all made out of cookies or something too? Perfect. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Think, there's like. a chocolate island. Like, well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's a chocolate island, yeah. So, uh, so yeah. I'm so worried about mm, obesity delicious. then. Uh, <laughs> um, I, well, in the absence of being able to vote for Captain Toad, which by my perfect first choice, I would probably, I would probably vote for uh, Princess Peach myself. Traditional, because you take her out and you just get robbed by Bowser straight away. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so it would be you a cheap day. Well, the chances are, yeah, by the end of the meal, when you come in to pay, she will get robbed by Bowser at oh, some that, point. Yeah. Then you'll be left there with the bill. Oh yeah, I haven't thought that through. Mm. Um, if he could rob her and then but pay the bill before he goes, <laughs> so then at least Mind you, in strange the hypothetical. Kingdom, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I suppose Princess Peach dines out for free in the Mushroom Kingdom. Given Strong enough. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> also, you could just go and bang your head on the block for some coins because they are they are plentiful. readily available. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the yeah. currency system is completely up, up <laughs> I was a bit confused by Kirby because surely you just hoover up everything. In front I think of I would take Kirby. <laughs> yeah, that would be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that would be kind of going on to a, a meal with a sort of bacteria, wouldn't it? Or all like, <laughs> yeah. this is like go to an all-you-can-eat buffet. Yeah, yeah. So we'll put that name to the test. <laughs> well, scientifically interesting, but this is not a good day. <laughs> and as we said, like fair play to uh, Isabel from Animal Crossing, who has racked up three hundred and twenty-one thousand yeah. votes, probably fair more play. by the time you watch this. Um, but yeah, so she's obviously uh, suddenly become into the, the superstar in Fruit Smash, I suppose. That she's actually dead didn't she go out on a date with Snake though? Did solid, she? Yeah, as in Solid Snake. Yeah. Did she? Do you not see when she no. <laughs> when, <laughs> when when she was announced for Smash? She saw those sort of releases of her in the Jeep with Solid Snake. How did that not make <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> yeah. It just wow. looks so funny, the juxtaposition of Snake looking all serious and then her just there sat next to him. It has to be said, uh, <laughs> if Nintendo had dared to put Bowsette on here, then obviously Bowsette would have run away with this. I mean, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, but Nintendo have basically said that Bowsette doesn't exist. Only Toad, oh, strobe lighting. Yeah. Only, uh, yeah. only Toad, uh, Toadette can wear the uh, the magical hat that turns her into... I wonder if this is um, the the kind of kicker that they have for making the Waluigi experience because if it, the if Waluigi this, experience, <laughs> which is kind of like a, a new wing <clears throat> of Nintendo theme park, um, but yeah, maybe that they they will do a game like if it's that popular. Stealth action. Stealth, Stealth action. action. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Unless anyone else has anything about the <laughs> the Valentine's Day. <laughs> Nothing I can talk about here, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, other little bits and tidbits in the news I spotted this week. Uh, so Square Enix uh, have trademarked a Secret of Mana, Final Fantasy Adventure and Mystic Quest in Europe. So, Ooh. I mean, it might not mean anything. It might just be that they're keeping up their, uh, their trademarks, as companies do. But um, the weird thing about um, Secret of Mana, so all these games basically are the same way of saying Secret of Mana in a, way, in a weird way. Um, so Final Fantasy Adventure for the originally released for the Game Boy um, was then known as Seiken Densetsu uh, Final Fantasy Gaiden in Japan and was known in Europe as Mystic Quest and so its sequel was The Secret of Mana so it's kind of like the same it's like the, the right. way of trademarking the same game three times strangely um, but yeah the weird thing about Secret of Mana is that uh, Seiken Densetsu 3 which was like the sequel to Secret of Mana was never released in the West and has never been translated to this day. There is like a fan translation you can play right. uh, or that you can check out and read what the script would have been. But it was never actually released over here and I loved this game. So I don't know, it's on the Super Nintendo, like the mini one. Yeah. I don't think, have you ever picked that up and had a go of it so no. far? No. Isn't it that this, the cart is one of the, like a crazy rare, really expensive Super Nintendo? Yeah, yeah. And they it couldn't, well so the story goes, they, they couldn't release it in the West because the uh, the amount of storage was bigger than our cartridges were over here. Right. I don't know if it was some crazy size. Um, and the idea of it changed a lot, so there was like uh, lots of different characters you could select rather than just a three you were handed in Secret of Mana. Right. Yeah, it's like a really odd, and uh, the, like the series is huge in Japan, and so they're still uh, they're making quite regular um, iOS and Android games. Called there's right. one called Circle of Mana, one called Rise of Mana. Uh, Circle of Mana is a card battle game, and, like, and uh, Rise of Mana is an eight player co op title with microtransactions and all the rest of it. Ooh, so it's like yeah. it's amazing how uh, the tr the series is going and going and going in Japan. But over here, it's kind of not been heard of for a long time, um, other than the Secret of Mana HD um, sort of remake that came out that was like the right. chibi, as they call it, the art style. Um, but yeah, maybe finally this means we'll get Secret of Mana 3 or 
like another sort of main series title. Would be Maybe. Really cool. I wonder what that would look like. Would it be a remake or would they just put it out there as is? Or? I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not a big fan of remaking it with those kind of style of graphics. I prefer it if they would just do the sprites again, but make those HD and like sort of cool retro mm. sprites. But doing them in this like chibi way, I don't know. I've just never been a big fan of that way of doing it. So it's an RPG, right? Yeah. yeah so the, what do you what do you do? So it's weirdly a three player <laughs> game. <laughs> what is this game? So you uh, <laughs> you start off as like the the hero, and you and it's one player, and then eventually right. you meet another guy, and then from that point on, another person can control that character. What? And then there's a the, so there's there's a two like a, a, a like an adult a human male then a female you meet, and then there's also this weird little kind of gnome or dwarf or something, I can't quite remember, um, from like the fantasy realm. Um, and then eventually it does become, if you had like the Bomberman style uh, adapter to plug three, yeah, multi-tap and so on, uh, you can play three players, but the characters come in and out of it, so it's sometimes <laughs> like the second player or the third player wouldn't have a character control. It's like, right. it's a weird, it was very uh, I, yeah. fluid back in the day, it was cool. I cannot, it's quite innovative, but I cannot imagine playing an RPG with two no. other people. It sounds like an yeah. absolute nightmare. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> when you play it on your own, which is probably the best way, you can just task the other characters, you can go into the menus and make it so that they charge their attack to whatever level you want before they attack and you can make them even more aggressive or more defensive and healing or so it's, it's actually quite advanced for the well very advanced for the uh, the era it was in this was like you know prime and super nintendo um like i don't know like 90 mid 90s kind of territory when it came out yeah um but yeah no really good it's uh, a little bit of news just for me i think that one and then uh, <laughs> i can tell you're excited <laughs> but yeah, and then the other thing i noticed it obviously not really in the news at all but it's the 10th anniversary of flower on the 12th of february mm, which cool. actually is now as we're recording this um, and yeah, like it's just I can't ima- I can't believe that ten years has passed since I first played Flower. Yeah. It's just such a good game. So do you, you guys have yeah, yeah. played mm, it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. is that for the same guys who did Journey? Yeah, so oh, that okay, game company. Right. So they made Flow, uh, then they made Flower, then they made Journey, and now they're making uh, Sky for iOS, which looks like a similar kind of. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's really uh, it's difficult to know what those games are going to be before you actually play them because they're also hard to kind of pin down in trailers. Sky must be imminent right because it feels mm. like ages ago they announced it I would have thought so I mean when do they announce new iPhones it might come out with those maybe um, September usually. yeah I wouldn't be surprised if it's September then yeah. when it comes out that's the kind of thing that they would pick up because it's a bit arty isn't it I think <laughs> a bit arty, <laughs> says the connoisseur again <laughs> the, uh, the, I think there has been kind of murmurings of a Playstation another Playstation game but um, there's nothing in the wild about what that might be so far but I mean mm. obviously anything by these these guys would be great um, but yeah, I just, I, like Flower was so good. Like um, anyone who hasn't played it, the idea is you are like a petal, and as you are, you're controlling the wind essentially using. Um, do you remember oh, what was it them, called like. at the time? <laughs> the uh, the six axis controller. Oh, was it called? Yeah, Where yeah, you yeah. actually had motion controls in the PS3 controller, <laughs> and um, you could kind of like swoop the. That was my least favorite part of that game. I yeah, quite liked yeah. it, but it was Flying hard to do hard <laughs> trouble. It was hard to do <laughs> tight turns, wasn't it? Um, do you remember that in uh, Everyone's Gone to the Rapture when you used to do, do that to get the ghost thing? Do you remember <laughs> that? No. <laughs> it was uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There was Lair as well, wasn't the there? <laughs> Lair, uh, which was like the dragon yeah. flying game, which yeah. then they basically had to take all those controls out of it and just put normal controls back in because no one could do it. It was really hard <laughs> missions. Um, but anyway, yeah, getting back to flowers, so the idea was you controlled one petal that then gathered more and more petals as you went through fields of flowers and eventually had this like massive swarm of petals and it was very orchestral. So it was kind of like cool. Snake. <laughs> yeah, in a way, in a weird no, way. Well, you're not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> and then like it gets kind of dark by the end of the game and sad. It's, it's very well, kind of like all their games do, I suppose. But yeah, I uh, just noticed that doing the rounds today. But yeah, it's a great, great game. <laughs> Should we start where we usually, we'll go to where we usually start, which is uh, our what, what you've been playing <laughs> yeah. uh, section. Uh, so what have we been playing this week? I've got a couple of things I could start with, if you like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. go for it. Should we start with is any, uh, Apex Legends? Anyone heard of this game? So, oh, yeah. Uh, it's not really been picked up much on the internet. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, they're very new, young developer, aren't they? With, not much uh, chatter, not much profile. <laughs> so yeah, I I dabbled uh, over the weekend Ooh. in it, uh, and uh, yeah, really enjoyed it. Um, so very much like uh, what it was advertised as a combination of Overwatch and Fortnite. So the idea is you're in um, a squad of three uh, people, including yourself, and uh, you can go off solo from there if you want to, but you're probably going to get killed. Um, if you stick with your three, then you come out of like the, the battle bus kind of drop ship. Um, you can nominate between you where you're going to go, and then one person takes control of the three of you, 
and flies you down to the spot nearest to where you've agreed to kind oh, of weird. go so to. So you can't independently control. You can, you can, you can press a button and kind of go, no, I'm going somewhere. Oh, okay. So <laughs> the only time I actually could be bothered to do the dropship bit, because uh, it nominates, I don't know how it chooses um, who the best player is to do it, but maybe by experience or whatever, how many games you've played. Is that your way um, of saying it was never you, Mike? It was, it was <laughs> yeah. me, it was me twice. Never got the chance. Oh. <laughs> the first time I got to do it, I basically just, because you have an option to give up that option, and it was like the second time I'd ever played oh, okay. the game. So I was just like, you know what, I'm just going to give up this option and let someone else take over. The other time I did it, I managed to fly us into a no, a no land zone, which then said return to the wow. map immediately. Wow. Uh, which was because I, I, I think it was far too high up and it wasn't part okay. of the actual map. But um, yeah, in terms of playing it, my first go was the best go I had of it. Although I didn't kill anybody or do anything worthwhile of any description <laughs> except survive. Wow. Um, but I was with like this group of uh, these other two chaps who were obviously very good at it. And we survived until we were the third um, la last team remaining. Hey, that's then, pretty good. Yeah, I think you have. So you have sixty players um, all together on a map at once. So I guess that's twenty teams if, if maths works like that. So you, so we were the third of twenty teams. <laughs> I believe it does. Yeah. I think it does. Yeah. We'll, get, um, we'll get the fact checkers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, behind the scenes, boffins. Um, and all we really did was kind of walk around. Does the, the the storm like there is in Fortnite that you know constricts and directs you where to go? We kind of got lucky that we were always in it in in like this the safe zone and we never really had to move. So we ended up just getting this one building and that we kind of you can't build anything but you can you know take over a building and and work out where all the good points are to snipe from and stuff and we just stood there and my the, my colleagues managed to kill maybe a couple of people who strayed too close to us but on the whole we just sat there for the whole game while everyone else killed each other and that's then, battle uh, royale that's, that's <laughs> pretty much, uh, battle royale and then uh, as soon as we got into close quarters combat with another couple of teams they just immediately killed us and that was the end of that but yeah um for my first go my all my other go is basically where i would land get shot and die yeah um there is a point then where yeah, they can yeah. resurrect you so you, if you go to a, a downed comrade's uh, body before they're finished off uh, you can just kind of do a, a health thing on them and bring them back to life if then but if you get killed completely like you get it's a bit like gears of war where you get downed and then yeah, killed. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you get killed altogether they can still resurrect you by getting going to your body getting this kind of thing off you and then going to these resurrection chambers and then triggers a drop ship to come and drop you back into the into the fray that happened to me once where someone actually resurrected mm. me but that means there was about 13 occasions or more where <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot more than that actually where I was just left to die. And then you die. But it is quite anyway. quick. It lets you then just get out of the game, start a new one. It's very good. Like the server's solid as a rock. It's actually unbelievable that they've launched, you know, yeah. they, they, they've managed to, given that how many games these days release with problems. It came out of nowhere, didn't it? It just yeah, sort of launched. Yeah, yeah. Well, like usually you'd, would... you'd have like a beta test or a beta yeah. test, I should say. And um, But this game, obviously nothing like that. And yet it just works. I right. guess they've learned a lot from Titanfall. It only leaked like a couple of days before didn't it yeah, you know, like, yeah. I think uh, Kotaku got it like, but it was very very close um, and I think they've, they've, that was clever wasn't it because ultimately you didn't leave a load of time for people to go well it's just going to be another a EA game with horrible loot boxes and terrible practices and it, it just went right just go for it people were like whoa 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 you know and, and obviously everyone scrambles first you know to be the one that has got you know fast to the game and then you know up the, up the leaderboards so they knew that if they just put it out people would jump on it and they would probably forget about it and from what i understand i mean you you probably able to say but the micro transactions and the actual kind of money money side of it isn't actually that odious no so so you can buy uh like you know with real money for, i think it's 7.99 for the basic i can't remember how many credits it buy like in-game money um <clears throat> to buy um it's all that like, superficial um things like you know different gun skins and character skins you can unlock more characters doing that as well so at the start you only get a certain amount of the available heroes and you can add you can buy or earn more by playing the game um <coughs> you also get these very similar to overwatch little drop packs that you unlock every for every level you go to and then they sort of more cosmetics pop out of those so you end up with like rare gun skins and this that, and the other i mean uh, i've scratched the surface there's so much stuff when you go into every gun and every character and everything there's millions of taunt skins this, that, and the other. Um, Are there any dances based on there's no, famous movie or I don't, think yeah. there was, I don't think there was dances. Um, obviously, the like really, the really cool thing it's got going for it that I've not really seen in in many games is you can chat to people without chatting to people. That looks really. That's <laughs> to me. That's the most appealing. Yeah. Thing. yeah so rather than um, like have to use a microphone, you can point your uh, reticle at whatever you want to. You press um, R1, I think, or you can long press it to bring up like a. Um, 
various things you can select but if you just press it once it'll kind of go oh uh, let's go over there or if you're aiming at some ammo it'll say oh there's ammo over there and you know and then it pins it down for everyone else in your squad to see so it's kind of cool like that um so yeah i mean i'm i'm gonna play more of it I'm hopefully you guys have downloaded it now and we can drop in together at oh, some it, point. it's sitting on my ps4 already <laughs> <laughs> I, just I just haven't started it yet. yeah i mean the barrier for entry is is tough i mean everyone on it seems to be about 20 times better than me and i'm obviously lapsed online gamer these days wait till um, i wade in yeah yeah, yeah. I uh, yeah, I mean I used to play Counter Strike loads back in the day and was very really, you know pretty good at that, but these days I'm just you know, there's too much else to play like you know, Resident oh, Evil and yeah. such. But um, do we think this is the uh, the Fortnite toppler? I don't know. I mean Fortnite is coming from such a strong position. It's going to take something monumental to. It's it's kind of like saying it's you know Twitter or whatever the Facebook toppler, isn't it? Nothing True, can really yeah. topple Facebook. <laughs> yeah. um, but it, they must be. They must have looked at it at least and thought, oh, we, need Something, to, we, yeah. we probably need to uh, you know, up our game a bit. But that can only benefit gamers, really, can it, if uh, it's mm. got some competition? It's probably it's probably the PUBG top of there. I could see this mm. overtaking PUBG quite comfortably. Yeah, I mean, PUBG stats are already <clears throat> kind of year on year going, mm. going the wrong way for what they would want, I think. Um, so, yeah, uh, it could well be that. It's, it's certainly really good, really fast-paced. The characters are interesting. It's, like I said, it's Overwatch-style heroes and villains. Um, I played as one called Lifeline, who was the medic, who was like pretty cool. Um, I've played as a few of them, but um, I don't know. This, we'll, we'll have to compare notes next time, and hopefully we'll have joined up. Uh, anyone else? Any more for any more? No, I've played a bit more Undertale. Still enjoying it, but not not a massive amount to report more than I said last time. Um, still enjoyed it though. It's still a good game. Um, I've been playing an older game. I've been playing Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Oh, oh yeah. which is like, ancient. Yeah, it's, not, it's five months old. It's, it's like practically prehistoric. If you took that to the Antiques Roadshow, it'd be worth millions. Um, I like it. I think it's good. Uh, I mean, <laughs> Concise. I'm, <laughs> I'm enjoying it. So, one of the main complaints people had about previous Tomb Raiders since the reboot, so Rise and the self titled one, mm. was that they were too shooty. There was too much shooting of uh, baddies going on. And I agreed with that. My favourite thing about Tomb Raider is. Raiding tombs, weird that. Yeah. Um, but in the previous two titles, they just threw a load of blokes at you, and it was, it was quite gory as well as sort of, sort of ultra violence in there. That's been um, toned back a bit for Shadow. Um, and Which is weird because in the trailer it looked like it was really, really violent. There's still quite a bit of gunplay in there, but it is it is mainly exploration, I would say. And there's mm. there's a lot of tomb story based tombs. There's a lot of um, optional tombs as well, so. That appeals to me, like the, the whole tomb raiding aspect. Why do they keep finding these tombs? It's <laughs> yeah, like when I kill, yeah, just yeah. go out. They don't just go, ah, oh, there's a tomb, there's a tomb, there's a tomb. Oh, it's well, the, all over the, place. The, the cool thing is they just appear magically on my map as well. So, that's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm getting near the end game of that now. I've not finished it yet, but the, the shooting does ramp up towards the end. It's almost like they had nothing else to do. Yeah. It's just like, what, what, how do we finish this game? Yeah. Let's throw two of the most heavily yeah. uh, equipped yeah. guards at you. Just, to, just Yeah, like, oh, thing. it's shotgun guy with the armor on who comes in. And then, then it's like, oh, guy with rocket yeah. launcher. Guy, then it's sniper light rifle yeah. guy. Guy with helmet. Then it's yeah. all of them. <laughs> guy with helmet. Guy with a shield. Why don't they all wear helmets? Yeah, they must go like, wait a minute. That, yeah, we've oh. only afford, <laughs> afford six helmets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, we, no, he, we need the fat guy with the shotgun <laughs> to get that. No, that's not you. How many more guys are there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> a guy, I'm, there's yeah. two guys disguised as one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm really, I'm really enjoying it. There's a lot to do. There's a lot of, there's a lot of collectibles, a lot of side quests and stuff, which I'm really enjoying. Um, and also, you can have like previous games. You can have classic skins. So I've been playing with the Tomb Raider Two skin, Ooh. which is weird because my Lara's all blocky. PC, but, oh, yeah, right, yeah. yeah. Is it all polygony? Yeah, like? she's, all, she's really <laughs> blocky. Everyone Harsh else, lines. Everyone else looks normal. Is, uh, <laughs> so the cutscenes look a bit random. With, like huge eyes. And yeah, yeah, yeah. That's weird. And, and a mouth that's just a. Well, it's because it's pointy like that. Yeah. Isn't it? yeah. Just, <laughs> her nose is just basically like one polygon. <laughs> 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 So I've been enjoying that, and um, yeah, it's quite fun. I, I like the Tomb Raider series. I'm yeah. quite a, I'm quite forgiving of so, its issues. Let me put you on the spot. If they were to do a, uh, the next one in this series, which inevitably yeah. they will, what would you ask them to change again to improve it? Ooh. Ooh. I would say even the thing is, it's quite. This one's been quite divisive because some people hate the fact there's less combat in it, and some people like me really appreciate that so I would say less combat and then people would say no we need more combat <laughs> so you can't possibly win one thing I would say is story wise and this is a really horrible scene with Lara's dad which I did not appreciate oh. I won't give away any spoilers 
I thought I'm intrigued. Yeah, well, yeah. I'll tell you off air. Yeah, you're gonna have to. <laughs> Dominic West. It, it's very, yeah. it's very dark for for Tomb Raider, but um, yeah, yeah. It, well, yeah I've got questions. But All right, any answer. dinosaurs? <laughs> yeah. Any dinosaurs? No. I'm thinking about the original. There's, <laughs> there's monkeys. Oh, okay. Uh, there's, in fact, one of the things about the original Tomb Raider games on the PlayStation was that. It wasn't man that was the biggest threat. It was the animals, right? Yeah, and she used to just butcher yeah. tigers. All, all yeah, 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 yeah. So, so good news for animal haters. There are plenty of there's plenty of wildlife out there. Okay. Is this the one uh, where she fights the bear? Or is that the, like, is that rise? That That's rise. That's one, rise. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'm yeah. getting confused with which ones which. To be nice. I've played a Tomb Raider. It's got that really grisly scene, hasn't it? Like with the big demon guy where you go through the. Uh, the first one. Yeah, yeah, first one, yeah, yeah. And it's just like, that really happens. This is what kind of gets you about that game. Is It just sort of happens and you're like, that's you haven't really earned that. Oh, you haven't really earned that level of gore um, or that level of violence. It's like, I don't know. I think they obviously got hammered, didn't it, for that moment where she has that agonising, you know, kills a person. And she's like, I'm never going to live this down, but maybe I can get over it by killing another 50,000 people. I would, like, <laughs> I would say in this one she's got over it. Yeah, she's definitely yeah. Like, she's like, hey, I don't she's remember that guy. She's, she's cool with it. But again, it's quite gory, and not just from the perspective of um, the combat, but also there's a lot of scenes in some of the tombs where there's sacrificial chambers and stuff. It's pretty, it's pretty bleak. Yeah, yeah I would it, say. It, it's definitely got a very grisly tone, hasn't mm. it? It's like it's not pulling its punches, but I don't know whether that's in a good way. I like it. Disco. <laughs> uh, Luke, what have you been up to? Um, so I've kind of been alternating between playing Resident Evil 2 Remake mm. and Kingdom Hearts 3. So basically, I start off sticking at the top. <laughs> yeah. like wow. So basically, starting off with Resident <laughs> Evil. So which is you know it's quite a, co- a, a condensed story. It's quite simple to follow, but it's quite kind of anxiety inducing, and you've got to think a lot. You've got to make sure you're conserving ammo and everything. And when I've had enough of that, when I'm just like, oh, I need a bit of a palate cleanse, I switch over to Kingdom Hearts Three, yeah. which is a lot of the. <clears throat> I've got progressed more with the sort of gameplay and unlocked a lot of abilities and stuff. I'm now in Toy Story Land. You'll oh, be happy. Yeah. To know. Have you seen Baymax yet? No, Baymax. Oh no, from Big Hero Six. Yeah, yeah. Not as of yet. No. Okay. Can you keep us updated? I will. Okay. I'll, give you, I'll give you updates every time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I, I've actually quite enjoyed. Like from the opening of Kingdom Hearts Three, was super cinematic. Like in Olymp- on Olympus, you take down like the Titans, and the, the, Kratos the, did it. Yeah, exactly. It does feel a bit like you're climbing up. Mount Olympus and that Titans are like throwing stuff at you and I was like I'm playing Ge- uh, Gears of War uh, God of War 3 yeah, yeah. Um, but there's a cool bit when like you know during the boss battles you're taking on two of the Titans and the tornado one is in the background just randomly throwing stuff at you and then when you take on the tornado one it sucks you up and fires you up and you're flying down you've got to dodge all the things that's it's, being fired at you is the combat satisfying too. so it is into the sense that mm. it's quite automatic almost like there is only a few attack buttons but it's the it's quite nice sort of chaining things together so you'll use like a special move and then i don't know hercules will start flinging you around and fly you over there then you'll jump on um goofy's shield and he'll jump you up and throw you down um and then there's like different keyblades have different properties so one of them basically turns your keyblade into two sort of like arrow gun shooter things um so there's lots going on there's lots to kind of like just enjoy watching the spectacle of it all um however when it comes to the story and the cutscenes. I start to sort of just lose it a little bit because the story, I I can get behind the fact that it's a a story about good versus evil and Sora has got to unlock this ability so he can take on the big baddie. I can get, that's fine. There's lots of other things happening in the background. I don't, I guess I'm just trying to ignore, but it's also (laughs) that the actual cutscenes themselves are quite sort of slow and there's so many of them yeah. like you'll go through one encounter and you'll be like oh I've got to go over there to that vent and then suddenly I'm in another cutscene and then I'm like oh, okay battle through the <laughs> vent a little bit another cutscene to get out of the vent and then another cutscene when you're on the floor and I'm like wow there's a lot of cutscenes here it's and called I... Metal Gear Solidaritas well yeah, yeah <laughs> there is that but then you know after a while I'm like you know what I need a bit of a palate cleanse go back to Resident Evil 2 <laughs> it's nice and simple I know what I'm doing yep. and then I Fewer just cutscenes. basically continue that loop 
of just going back between the two games. You should be playing Resident Evil 2 whilst the cutscenes are playing. Oh, yeah. So I could, two yeah, consoles yeah. set up, two, two tellies. tellies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's I've got to get two tellies. A, that's, <laughs> that's a smart way to play. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've been kind of enjoying that loop, as it were, just sort of taking little breaks between the two, not sort of, I guess, doing one all in one go. Um, and the other thing I've been doing is I played the Devil May Cry Five oh, demo. Cool. So um, did it let you play as Nero and Dante? No, so I only played as Nero, um, and it's in the RE engine as well. So it's like Resident Evil Two and uh, Resident Evil Seven, mm -hmm. um, it looks it looks great. Um, in as Nero, basically he's lost one arm for some strange reason. So you've got these things called Devil Breakers. <laughs> Um, they're like robotic arms that have different properties and so they're mapped to their own attack button um, so you've got your main sort of sword swinging you've got your sort of different arms that whether or not that's a kind of like a sonic blast or one that just detaches itself and it's like a rocket fist that just <laughs> flies around wow. and hits the enemy um, <laughs> but like yeah as, as I say the, as well. <laughs> but they do break if you accidentally get hit while using them so oh, there's okay. a lot of tactical considerations to when you're actually connected employ those type of things um, there's also a weird EX meter like if you press the R2 button when or is it the L2 button one of the shoulder buttons when you hit connects it sort of charges it up so you're doing that you're thinking about blocking you're thinking about dodging so there's a lot going on yeah. uh, in the combat for for Nero but then obviously there is Dante and this other character called V um, that's going to be in the full game as well so I think it's going to be a game that will require a lot of sort of um, developing your skills and learning the sort of different play styles of the three different characters. But so the, the only game where I've persevered enough to do that lately is God of War. Yeah. Because I, <laughs> yeah. I loved all of the way it, it worked. Whereas I, like, I know that I'll suffer from the same problem I had with Bayonetta where I feel yeah. like I'm not playing it like it's supposed to be played. Okay, because I'm not like, getting S yeah, rankings. Well, yeah, well, not even that so much as just chaining nice combos together. There is a sort of element of stress of like, I've got to be doing this well, otherwise I won't get a bonus at the end of the level so I can't then spend money on buying upgrades and stuff. But I think the whole point of this is because the sort of level design is missions, that is the case if you go back and you try and do better at those missions. Mm -hmm. So rather than going through and just sort of experiencing a whole story in one go, you're kind of like, right, I'm going to get really good at this particular mission um, and enjoying that aspect of it. So we'll wait and see. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Point C. Very good. When's that out? It's soon, isn't it? I think it's out in March, yeah. I believe. Yeah. yeah. Cool, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, hopefully we'll get the full version to have a go at at some point. Beautiful. <laughs>
the Xbox One just didn't have enough content. It just they didn't have enough. They know now that they've they were well behind. Well, plus they advertise it as a TV recorder. Well, that was just, yeah, <laughs> a sort of entertainment system that yeah. wasn't just games. It was everything else as well. But. Yeah, yeah. But games are sort of you know. But but you mainly be watching ESPN on it. You know, like <laughs> no. Or the Halo TV series. Oh, what was by Spielberg? Red, red and blue. What was it called? It was something glass. They were going to have. Um, it was like you so see, you could watch it on your iPad, and it would come up with like different yes. smart glass. Smart yeah. glass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that never yeah. took oh, off, yeah. did it? I mean, and they also had that thing, you know, where it was like a concept where the whole room was the screen. Did yeah, you remember that? that was so just... good. So they had Halo, and then around it, it was like you had the exterior of shots of the around your telly was yeah, also yeah. part of the gameplay. So it's like a kind of sort of ambient light all the way around what you were doing, um, and then all that got binned off, and they basically <laughs> went, "Well, let's just focus on cloud computing because that's what people want." Uh, with Crackdown 3 which still hasn't come out um, uh, no it's soon though it's, um, it's, it's this Friday I think I think Ooh. it is that yeah. feels like that game should already be about 3 quid at CX <laughs> <laughs> it's like why is it why is it not come out yet that's where it sh- that's its destiny um, so uh, um, you know I think what they re- really need to do is, is continue with those big hitters continue with the strategy continue with single player games that's what people want um, and don't overthink it in a lot of ways you know it's kind of like I think there's always a push to sort of do the next big thing you know let's let's do a crazy peripheral let's go full streaming and it's like yeah that might work but if you don't have the software and you don't focus on the software people are just not going to come back you know they can get TV anywhere you know Netflix and whatever they don't need another TV device they don't need another Entertainment system. They've got loads of different entertainment systems. They've got iPads. They've got all this kind of thing. They want to get the, these. You buy a PlayStation to play games, don't you? That's the whole point. No, I totally agree. I mean, it's weird because two consoles, uh, like two successors, haven't really ever become a success. You know what I mean? So yeah. like the PS One and the PS Two was probably the, the last time that mm. happened. Mm. So since then, the PS Three, like even though in the end it sold really well, but yeah. like anecdotally at the time, it seemed that the PS Three was a big backward step to where uh, the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty and Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty took the lead. And then obviously lost it to Xbox One when the PS4 came out. Um, so it's going to be, it'll be a big thing to keep the PS5 and the momentum going. Um, I was just wondering about this for you as well, Jack. Uh, obviously you've been playing a lot of PSVR. What do you think the PS5 will mean to the PS... Do you think there'll be a PSVR 2? Or, you know, there's obviously That's things they could do to improve that. It's a, it's a weird one because they could make it backwards compatible with the PSVR as it is now, mm. which would be quite a smart move in the short run. But in the long term... I mean, the PSVR is already feeling a bit dated, especially if you're using it with move controllers, which work fine, mm. but they're not that responsive. They're from PS3 era, yeah. aren't they? Or yeah, yeah. yeah, from the Wonderbook. <clears throat> and, so. oh, yeah. and, you know, the the resolution on the headset could do with a bit of a bump up as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, so a PSVR 2 would be a smart move, but you're also then alienating all the people that bought a PSVR. And uh, the... Like the price of the PSVR has just come down to that sweet spot where it doesn't feel like a complete yeah. um, like mm-hmm. waste of money to buy it because it's come down to the point where it's affordable. Yeah. Whereas before it was a really high end kind of like man toy in a way. <laughs> like a... Maybe it'll be bundled in with the PS5. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's so expensive. <laughs> the, the one good thing about the PSVR is that they've Sony have continued to support it. So Sony have this reputation for not supporting their, their wacky ideas and yeah. their, their peripherals. The Vita, yeah, yeah. the Wonderbook. Yeah. Move but, itself. Yep. Yeah. But with the PSVR... The iToy. The iToy, mm. yeah. But with the PSVR, there's still, there's still content coming out every week for it. Mm. And that's really healthy as well. And it's not just big, you know, 40 quid games. It's small indie titles well, too. it's mainly smaller games, <clears throat> yeah, isn't it? There's that's not true. been like a, what you'd call a triple A game, I don't think, has there? Not, for... not... Well, I guess... Not dedicated. Well, yeah, not dedicated. Yeah, yeah, not made from the ground. Although I'd say that the, the platform is better suited to small, bite-sized games anyway. But um, yeah, you, yeah. you want to sit down for like four hours and play it, would you? Well, this is the thing. Like, so, Resident Evil Seven is like the most notable, I suppose, like AAA game that, although it's not dedicated to it, but I, I, I just couldn't see myself yeah. playing through that with the PSVR. I mean, I had PSVR for a few months, and in the end, uh, be too scary. Sold it, but yeah, well, it would be <laughs> yeah. a too scary. But B, like <laughs> when I tried to play um, some of the games that had you kind of walking. It was so difficult. Yeah. I, it was so like nausea inducing. But yeah, um, basically, yeah. So Sony just need to carry on doing what they're doing. Is what we're saying. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Game and also not just games, but just exc- like, now the exclusives. Now the yeah. now the, yeah. their big franchises they're known mm. for, and they'll be sorted. I think. And with the backwards compa- compatibility thing, there's been some patents going around about Sony, you know, registering patents for backwards compatibility. I do think there'd be in quite a strong position if they came out with the PS5 and said 
it's compatible with everything previous because they've got such a strong legacy in gaming. Mm -hmm. If they, if they produce one console so you can play any PlayStation game on it, that'd be that'd be pretty impressive. It's just what that service then is. Do you have to yeah. pay more, or is it part of your PS Plus, or is it you know an extra like PS Now type <coughs> deal? I mean, that's where the it's the layers of what you're willing to stretch to every month, isn't it? Because we're already paying out for you know broadband and yeah. TV or whatever yeah. it might be. Do we think there is any chance that they might look at the kind of uh, portable space again or like a hybrid space for well, the, the Switch, Switch space yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah maybe I mean uh, the thing is they've always gone for power yeah I'd be surprised if they because really to make a Switch it can't be as powerful as a PS4 I don't think we're quite there with technology nah. quite yet um, so unless they do that link box thing again was it PlayStation TV or PS oh, TV they got yeah. burnt on that one as yeah, well, well and, yeah. that, and, that, <laughs> and that's another one they dropped like a stone so yeah I mean uh, I think they'll have to go with power again. Really, they'll be you know 4K native, 4K, yeah. um, no post process. It'll all just be 60 done. FPS. Yeah, 60 like, frames yeah. per second. Yeah, and, and that's where they have to go with it, really. Um, and then I think they also need to like back to the games. They need to keep throwing in the odd surprise, like yeah. Horizon, mm. um, Spider Man. Even was a quite a surprise. Rather than just going, okay, we'll do God of War two, yeah. Spider Man <clears> two. There has to be like a few little surprises scattered here and there. And yeah. you know, they've got the studios to do that, so I don't think that'll be a problem. Uh, but yeah, I think we have just about answered the letter or the tweet. <laughs> Off to uh, the on the record bit with Luke. On the record. So this week, uh, it, the um, Overwatch season two begins mm -hmm. very very soon, and uh, <clears throat> we have a bunch of different things from season one yeah. to report on. And I think you've done a little bit of reading around. The Overwatch League in general. Well, I was going to ask you guys if you knew much about the Overwatch League uh, or what the structure is. Obviously, an it. expert. No, <laughs> yeah, I absolutely. only know um, <clears throat> from from doing last year's like, 2019 book, like bits and bobs from talking mm. to the various people connected with it, but not. I've never actually sat down and. So we've got some points watched. here. Um, so basically, it's international base, uh, city based, international city based. To, uh, teams recruit Overwatch players to compete in a five month Ooh. season. Uh, followed by a championship playoffs with a $1 million uh, first place prize. Wow, um, so a, a season consists of uh, a period of non-regulation, pre-season play, a regular season divided into four stages, and a post-season single elimination pay playoff uh, to determine the championship. Ooh. So it's kind of like structuring itself very much as being like a kind of sport, like almost yeah, like American the NFL style, yeah. type thing. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so let's get into it. Um, so the first thing I've got is the uh, first Overwatch League Grand Final Champions. Um, so on the 28th of July 2018 uh, at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York, um, the London Spitfires became the first champions of the Overwatch League Grand Finals. Uh, the London Spitfires won uh, the Grand Finals 2-0 uh, to zero against Philadelphia Fusion oh, right. and took Oof. home the $1 million prize. Ooh, come Go on, Spitfires. Yeah, <laughs> come on, Battle of Britain. <laughs> um, so I was going to ask if any of you guys had actually watched any of it or tuned into bits of it at all. No. Uh, no. I mean, I watched. Little, <laughs> yeah. uh, I think I watched a little high highlight reel of that just because we were writing about it for the... Um, well, I was putting these records on the system. You're actually mm. reading out my writing. Oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, I mean, like, it's funny, isn't it? Because the London Spitfires, they are actually supposedly based in London, but I think they're all from kind of South Korea and stuff. So it's kind of like oh, football right. where the teams are pulled from anywhere. Oh, okay. <coughs> yeah, yeah. Well, like it's a franchise system. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, exactly. Right. Yeah. So this is their, I guess, uh, Activision Blizzard's kind of attempt to make uh, eSports more mainstream, to really give it credibility. Um, do you think this is where it is? Just Is this where the, the eSports becoming mainstream thing is? Well, I think esports feels like to me it needs, um, you know, kind of a really sizable broadcaster to get behind it. You can see then that actually it will become, um, you know, you can do a bit of soapbox racing and then a bit of esports, <laughs> you know. But it, it feels like it needs something like that to come along and uh, and grab it and say, right, yeah, this is the next big thing. Because otherwise, I think you'll always you'll always be sort of. Like like games in general, you always be struck, sort of trying to persuade mainstream audiences. Like, hey, it's not just like nerds in bedrooms, and you know, it's actually a proper thing, you know. But you, you only get that when you actually put it in front and center, in in it kind of where I've, those people are. I've never quite looked at the numbers involved, but obviously, like you know, a million dollars, a lot of money. I don't know how your average esports kind of yearly budget compares to something like darts or snooker or you know something that's yeah. like you know it's in the it's 
it's in the periphery of like being a if you're really good at it you're a very rich person yeah and it's the same with esports it feels like so they can't be i don't know what the difference is between how much prize money is on offer from those kind of sports to esports well i bet actually it's starting to get to that point well sports really take off don't they when they've got like a, a promoter or series of usually competing promoters are behind it who who kind of pull the sport forward you know they'll they'll put the teams together they'll get the sponsorship they'll go out know, bashing down the doors of the broadcasts and stuff like that I assume there's now that for esports because there's so much money to to be had, but um, you know you can imagine someone who's kind of doing darts because darts because of a, a, a broader appeal, doesn't it? You know, in like kind of mind you, we're misunderstanding esports' appeal in the uh, in South the Korea, East. Or yeah, in, in China and stuff, yeah, yeah, China. Yeah, I mean, obviously over there it must be a much different market, but you know, while you won't want to kind of diminish those markets. It's America, in it, where you know this is gonna. If it breaks it in America, someone picks it up and really, really pulls it in America. It will break everywhere. But it doesn't feel like that's kind of happening. It's I think been, ESPN, shown does, ESPN, yeah. ESPN does have something, but it doesn't <coughs> like put it in you know kind of in the proper proper front and center. It's weird actually. Like you know, some sports, you see them kind of going in and out. Like boxing is having a real resurgence at the moment because like people like the Zone have got behind it, so they've put together like a billion dollar deal with a load of promoters. And there's people like um, there's a Mexican boxer who's got deal for like 350 million dollars which is like which is huge but they know that they can build they built a streaming service out of it so people sign up to the zone um, they, and they show it in the pubs and they they can basically become make a kind of sky brand out of it so it probably takes something like that so like a whether it's twitch or whether it's something else that goes right i'm now really going to give this a punt and we'll pick up your big play biggest team biggest players make them absolute stars um you know Bit of scandal probably never hurts. Um, I think we're a long way off people watching overwatching pubs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't quite see that happening. Yeah, yeah. It is a bit strange because you've got to have a, a fair good grasp of what's going on in the yeah. game because if you've yeah. ever watched because I watched a little bit of it um, it's quite hard to unless you have a full understanding of what each character is doing and what mm. their roles are it can just look like a sort of chaotic mess of colour yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's a good point actually. the other problem is because they, they play the game not really the way it's played by the general public as well no. sometimes because they're so they, they know the characters so well that they're playing like a like a meta game within the game yeah and it's hard to follow if you don't know much about it it's the same with Do I mean Dota is the ultimate example but you could really. sort of so hard to follow you could sort of say the same thing about say formula one like yeah, no, unless yeah, you have a full understanding absolutely. of what on earth they're talking well, about on, as well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, or cricket, transfer windows what <laughs> what's that got to do with football <laughs> yeah, yeah but that, a good example I, you can be out in about 90 different ways but you would never know unless you uh, yeah but you know the thing i suppose you, the point you're making there isn't it that there is no consistency so it's like you know in dota it's not like you can understand like oh you're throwing the darts at the board or you're hitting the ball everyone understands what's going on even though the rules might be complicated and some people might go i don't know what's going on but you know things are happening with when you've got to learn an instruction manual to, to understand what's going on most people just be like i oh, forget that <laughs> you know? and of course there is this kind of stigma as well of like you know games in general you know like people around the pub um you know it's yeah, well, people who don't play games think it's kind of childish. Yeah, yeah. Whereas yeah. people who don't like football, they might think you're kind of, you know, a loudmouth yob or something. Like, yeah, maybe yeah. that's their opinion, but they wouldn't think you were necessarily childish because you like football. So, yeah, but, there is a different stigma attached But you to could have, right, very feasibly see something like FIFA. I mean, obviously, it is football, but, you know, in from a kind of esports, and, and that might be your way in. So getting something that's more familiar, something like FIFA, racing, summit boxing game or something like that, which people understand it and then these people are really, really good at it. And, you know, that could be the way in for The thing esports. is, there is a FIFA esports um, uh, like community, but it's just not took off yet on telly as much as you think it might do, actually. Yeah. Which... It's hard to launch a sport, though, isn't it? It's like, you know, it's kind of, it's hard to relaunch a sport. You know, you've got to keep going. Like Formula One is massive, but they're really struggling because they've got, um, you know, broadcasters... Um, they've got um, you know a lot of things that that, that, that kind of they, you know they've got a grab audience. There's Fortnite. There's there's a load of people, young people have got loads of other stuff going on. So it's it's hard work, and it takes someone who probably like a, a central figure who is the esports mm. guru who just like drags it kicking and screaming into the American audiences. And until you've got that, I just don't think it'll happen organically. We should probably go next one. On <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little sojourn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so for my next record, I've actually got two for the price of one. 
here. Um, so Jun Ho Kim, aka Fury from the Republic of Korea uh, and of Team London Spitfire, took two records away from the first Overwatch League. Uh, firstly, the most eliminations during the Overwatch League's grand finals saw him take out 189 uh, opposition players across the two days of the final. Um, his second record actually kind of goes hand in hand with this, uh, which is the least deaths during the Overwatch League Grand Finals, uh, which is 23. So he's like um, yeah, Sergio Aguero getting 11 hat tricks. Ooh, yeah. yeah, impressive. Uh, which is basically uh, Fury's kill ratio was about eight to one. Mm. Um, so I was going to ask if Just you guys like have- Just Neon Apex Legends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask if you had any impressive kill death ratios to brag about or? Um, no. No, moving on, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so the, the final one is uh, Overwatch isn't all about eliminations, uh, sometimes a good support player is the uh, keystone to victory. So Zhong Sok Kim, aka NUS, I don't think anything associated with the National Union of <laughs> Students, um, from the Republic of Korea restored uh, 108,436 points of damage uh, to his London Spitfire teammates as they overcame Philadelphia Fusion, uh, making the record holder for the most healing done during the Overwatch League Grand Finals. So he's like your goalie. Mm. Yeah. 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 Thanks for that, Mike. Mm. <laughs> I was going to ask if you guys like playing as a support character at all. Well, that's Apparently you that did for Apex doing, yeah. Legends. Yeah, so in yeah. that you could uh, have like a little automated droid that went around and healed people. If I'd have worked out how to deploy it. <clears throat> yeah. It's too much pressure. It can be yeah. quite there fun playing as a support player because like, sort of the onus of you to get kills and get good isn't so much. You're just more going to sort of, I'm fulfilling a role. Well, you don't have to, yeah. So there's no aiming either. You can basically, they're quite forgiving because like the beam of healing is quite like, easy to direct. So there's no yeah. like, you know, uh, what do they call it? Twitch, twitch kills kind of thing. So. You're like a teaching assistant or something like that. <laughs> You know, or an orderly in a hospital. Yeah, very much so. Uh, a well, bit more exciting, right? Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> yeah. Playing a video game. <laughs> or maybe theme hospital. <laughs> We've got less than 10 minutes left. Well, hey, However, okay. this week's boss fight quiz, which we're on to now, yes. is um, a little a little different than usual. So there are no multiple choices. There are no lifelines oh, or, right. or power-ups, yeah. as we call them. Right. It's literally just you've got to guess the character based on the clue. Oh, dear. Who wrote yeah. the clues? Me. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I, uh, I did this on the train this morning. Oh, good. Did, did so you at least get Luke to give them the once over? It was Luke. No. Are no. <laughs> 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 you highlighted it on the email? It's not my fault. Oh yeah, you did, didn't you? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, question one. Yes. Or, or character one, shall we say? Yes. Okay. Uh, mutated by a mad. The old rhyme, by the way. That's how. Uh, that's how much time <laughs> I had on my hands on the train. Oh, God. Oh, no. Mutated by a mad scientist gun. This now two-legged marsupial loves to spin and run. Okay, that's got to be Crash Bandicoot, right? <laughs> Riddle me D. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, yeah, we did yeah. the final answer. Uh, Crash Bandicoot. It is Crash Bandicoot. Well done. That's very good. Would you have got that? Ding. Uh, maybe, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, question two. Uh, fighting angels is her standard fare. Just watch out for her killer hair. I assume that's, that's got to be Bayonetta. Mm, you would have thought so, wouldn't you? Yeah, that's why I said it. <laughs> yeah. By the way, uh, I love the thought process. Loads of gold in this uh, yeah, Bayonetta. Mm. Okay, quite right. Two for two. Two for two. Not, not Vianetta. Bayonetta three coming out this this year. I'm quite excited. Right, right. I'm really good. <laughs> Send Vianetta. <laughs> okay, you ready? Question three. Um, an orange suited scientist out to set humanity free. Just don't ask him about part three. Oh. Uh, it's Gordon, Gordon Freeman. Freeman yeah. <laughs> that was quite easy. <laughs> yeah. Gordon Freeman. Yeah. Gordon. Uh, ooh, question four. Gordon's alive. <laughs> oh, different I hope he is. Yeah. Uh, question four. So, born in Thailand, but with an arch enemy from Japan, this bad guy is taller than a minivan. Sagat. Yeah. Yep. Sagat. Is. I hate Sagat. Also like, known as Balrog in Japan, right? Yes. In, mm. uh, yes, it was, wasn't it? Crazy, yeah. M. Bison is um, what we call Balrog mm. yeah. because he was obviously t based on Mike Tyson and they didn't have the license or they didn't, oh, they didn't yeah, want to get yeah. in trouble. They in, didn't have the old Tyson in the rest of the world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's why he's also called Mr. Dream in, in uh, Punch-Out. Yep. Mr. Dream. Mr. Dream. Yeah. Um, 
Is this the last question? Yeah, oh, you're boss. doing well. You're doing well. We're at the boss. In fairness, <laughs> this is pretty simple. <laughs> don't, right. don't take it away from this one. Yeah, this one might, it look this one easy. might uh, trump you. I don't know. Uh, okay. Soon. All right, go for it. Uh, it depends how well you know your character names, I suppose. Mm. Uh, why is cracking while having a ball? This zombie-killing journalist is best known for fighting oh. in a mall. Oh, it's the guy from uh, yep. Dead, Dead Rising. Rising. Frank. He's covered wars. Uh, what's his name? Oh. Yeah. This is so annoying. <laughs> I'm afraid I'll need the full name. Frank. Full name. Uh, it's Frank. I've covered wars, you know. Bruno. It's not, it's not Frank Bruno. <laughs> not Frank Bruno. <laughs> That's really uh, annoying. Frank. Yeah, I know Hang who on. you're talking about. There's all the, um, I can't. the modding of this stuff, doesn't they? Um, I never really like those guys. I want to say Waters, but I don't know. I, don't, I can't remember his name. I can't remember Let's his name. Let's go Walters. It's not Walters. <laughs> Like Frank Walters. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It's Frank West. Hey. Ah, we oh, it. Yeah. Yeah. Memory yeah. 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 It, Sorry, we've got to take your first somewhere. answer. Though, no, no. So. Yeah. <laughs> that was just my working. Well done, very good. Hey. You, go. you can take that home with you. That's, oh. that's your prize. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's good. cool. Hold on. So, uh, did, you, did you prefer that version of the quiz? Yes, because we won it. Yeah, we won. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to come up with rhymes every week. Maybe. Find a new way to In fairness, it was a lot easier to write than four multiple choice answers. So, maybe that will be the new way going forward. We'll see. Uh, yeah, if you enjoyed the quiz, <laughs> then please let us know. <laughs> um, okay, that is all we've uh, we've got time for this week. Um, I say, if you want to check out uh, the rest of our shows, please go to uh, Guinness World Records YouTube channel. Uh, you can also check us out on our iTunes page. It's Use the old Google for that. Um, I have been Mike Plant at Mike Plant GC. Luke is at MinMax Luke. Uh, Jack, you are at QLC Jack. And Andy at Media Scribbles. All right, thanks for joining us. Until next week, bye for now. Bye. bye. bye.